Welcome back to the Top Notch Documentaries YouTube channel. Peter Tobin is one of the UK's most notorious serial killers. His reign of terror lasted decades, and he was a ghost for a long time, as he crisscrossed Scotland and spent a large part of his time in the south of England. He had previously lived in both Scotland and England. Tobin's serial killing spree may have never been uncovered if it hadn't have been for his actions in Scotland during his time spent on the run from the authorities. This was because he had failed to notify police of his move to Scotland following his release from prison. He was already a sex offender. On this episode of Cases from the Past, I'll be showcasing the crimes of this twisted predator. I hope you enjoy. It was in the year 2006 that a young Polish student named Angelika Kluck went missing from St. Patrick's Roman Catholic Church in Glasgow. The 23-year-old was on a working holiday in Glasgow and since she was Catholic, St. Patrick's Roman Catholic Church was appealing to her. Angelica was enjoying her time in Glasgow and was by all accounts a very well-liked person. But there were some dark forces at play in the church and it attracted some sinister people, one of these being the parish priest with whom Angelica was having an affair with. A self-confessed alcoholic, the priest was clearly not practising what he preached. He admitted to having had consensual sex with Angelica three or four times at Tobin's trial. He later claimed to have abused his position of trust and claimed to have felt shame once everything came to light. Adding to this revelation was the historic rape allegations that surfaced against him online and these are related to children. The priest died in 2010 of a suspected heart attack without any justice to these traumatised victims having ever been served. But the priest was not involved in this case. The disappearance of Angelica not only exposed this man, but also a serial killer, blending in with the church community. A man who had been murdering innocent women for many years. His rap sheet was long, and spoke volumes to the type of offender that existed within this society. A man named Peter Tobin. Tobin was actually working as a handyman at the church, although he was going by a fake alias, Pat McLaughlin. Tobin was familiar with the church, as he'd grown up Catholic, he knew how to fool people and had everyone under his spell. He was kind and considerate and would offer help to everyone. Angelica liked him and the two had been seen talking on numerous occasions. In fact, Peter, or rather Pat as he's known, had been the last person seen with Angelica. And where was Pat now? Well, shortly after Angelica's disappearance, the wonderful handyman had also mysteriously disappeared. Despite the revelations about Angelica's affair with the priest, police knew that something darker was at play. He was not responsible for her disappearance. Something evil had taken place and investigators were soon to learn the answer. The discovery of Angelica's body came on September the 29th of 2006. Angelica had been found in the crawl space of the church. Her death was brutal and barbaric. She had been stabbed many times, raped and ultimately beaten to death with a chair leg. The crime scene reflected the brutality of the offender. He was sadistic and had tied Angelica up. Whoever had committed this murder had surely done this type of thing before. DNA evidence from the offender was located on a kitchen cloth that had been used as a mouth gag and fingerprints were lifted from items at the crime scene. The killer had murdered Angelica in the church garage before dragging her lifeless body to the church crawl space. Just who had murdered this young student and where were they now? An appeal for information was broadcasted nationwide. Pat McLaughlin was the prime suspect and his photograph that he provided to the church was aired across the UK. It didn't take long before a caller phoned in some astounding lead. Pat McLaughlin wasn't the man's real identity. He looked like already convicted sex offender Peter Tobin. The broadcast of Tobin's image would help to secure his capture. He was by now in a London hospital and was cornered by the police a short time later and taken in for questioning. At the time, he was going by another fake name. Police had their suspect in custody and it wouldn't take long for him to be transferred back to Scotland. He had breached the terms of the sex offender registry and that was the reason that he was able to be held in custody. Not long after this, pieces of the puzzle began to come together. The man in custody was in fact Peter Tobin and his DNA was at the murder scene. This DNA evidence helped to secure a conviction against Tobin for Angelica's murder and in 2007, he was given a life sentence. But just who was Peter Tobin, who at the time of Angelica's murder was 60, a very unusual age to start committing sexually motivated murders. 
A secret police operation dubbed Operation Anagram was set up the week following his arrest. This was to track down potential additional victims of Tobin and really delve into his past. It was kept hush because it might have impacted Tobin's trial for the murder of Angelica. Peter Tobin was born in the year 1946 in the town of Johnstone in Renfrewshire, Scotland. He grew up in a large working class family and struggled in school. His bad behaviour had him at an approved school by age 7 and Tobin began his life of crime early as he began by stealing and eventually forging documents. Tobin never seemed to grow out of this criminal behaviour which for many youngsters is just a phase. He was charming and sadistic and knew how to manipulate those around him. Tobin would later have partners and was a father. His partners would later report how abusive and cruel he was toward them and how damaging his behaviour truly was. Now that I've covered a brief bit of Tobin's background, let's get on to some of the cases that he was connected to. A high profile Scottish case out of Bathgate bore a close link to Tobin who had lived in Bathgate. 15 year old Vicky Hamilton vanished in the year 1991. She was supposed to travel to her sister's house to stay the weekend but she never showed. Eyewitnesses had seen her and described her behaviour as nervous and upset. She was asking people about the bus that she was supposed to be getting to her sister's house. Unfortunately, the case went nowhere. No suspects were in the frame and it wasn't until September of 2006 that a new breakthrough emerged. Unbelievably, Tobin's former Bathgate house was searched and police found a knife. The DNA obtained from the knife matched to Vicky Hamilton. In 1991, police had found Vicky's purse at the bus stop and upon analysing the purse for forensic evidence, DNA from Tobin's son, who was an infant at the time, was found. Another case had just been nailed on Tobin and Operation Anagram was proven to be a success. A wise decision to retrace Tobin's past footsteps and help victims' families learn some answers. Along with looking up potential victims, investigators learned more about Tobin's 1993 conviction and imprisonment. Tobin had been convicted of a major sex crime against two 14-year-old girls at his flat in the county of Hampshire in August of 1993. For this he had been given 14 years, but he only served 10. A misfortune led to the girls ending up in Tobin's flat. He was two-sided as his former partners had pointed out upon being interviewed. This facade could fool anyone and that might explain them feeling at ease going to his flat. Tobin got the girls intoxicated, forcing them to drink alcohol at knife point. His son, the toddler whose DNA was located on Vicky's purse in Bathgate, witnessed Tobin stab one of the girls. He soon went on the run and joined a religious fellowship in Coventry. The pattern of religion keeps cropping up in the Tobin case. He had grown up in a religious community and his upbringing gave him some ability to adapt to similar religious settings whenever he needed somewhere to lie low. Tobin had turned on his flat's gas taps to kill the girls. Fortunately, they made it out alive, but they are likely traumatised to this day because of this encounter. As mentioned, he later served 10 years for this crime and was now an official sex offender. In 2004, mistakes were made, as Tobin had been released and then departed England with seemingly no implemented methods brought in to track his whereabouts. He wasn't planning on sticking about and had fled to Scotland. He was getting older now and he wasn't done with sexually motivated crime. This is how he took on the name of Pat McLaughlin and began working as a handyman at St Patrick's Church. As Tobin's trial for the murder of Angelica Cluck came to a close and his fate was sealed, Operation Anagram went public. The public could submit tips and investigators dedicated their lives to trying to figure everything out. Dinah McNichol vanished in August of 1991. Dinah was at Lip Hook Festival and upon leaving with a friend, they took a ride from a friendly Scottish man. Dinah was last seen with the man and she never arrived home. The only lead in the case came from Dinah's bank card having been used in Margate in Kent and Tobin had lived in Margate. Another house search was conducted as Tobin's MO was becoming more and more clear. He wasn't bothered about forensic evidence because his past victims were never linked to him. He had kept murder weapons hidden and left an area following a murder. Choosing to travel by car, he frequently drove from Scotland down to the most southern part of England. The public tip line yielded more information about potential activities. Tobin had dug a sandpit for his son in his garden in Margate and police focused on that region of the garden. 
Human remains were found and it was Vicky Hamilton's body, which police did not expect. Tobin had driven Vicky's body from Scotland. It was mind-blowing that someone would move a body that distance in a decomposing state. Dinah's body soon turned up close by. Families of the two women were now getting some answers after years of nothing. Much like in the case of Angelica, DNA evidence was rampant. Tobin's fingerprints were on the bags encasing the remains and for these murders, he was given two extra life sentences. To this day, Tobin is suspected as to having committed many more murders. In prison, he admitted to 10 murders total and had been seen all across the UK. One of these sightings was at a children's home in England. There was a history of child abuse at this home and it's unclear how involved Tobin might have been with this. Tobin was also looked at for his involvement in the Bible John murders, a series of murders out of Scotland. Tobin has since denied his involvement in these crimes. As Tobin grows older in prison, his health has rapidly deteriorated. The years of harming defenceless women has brought about karmic punishment. Given his convictions, he isn't well liked by the prison population and many aren't sympathetic to his plight. This has been another episode of Cases from the Past. As always, thank you for watching.